I was thinking, wouldn't it be cute if I filmed in front of my plant shelf to just to spice things up a little bit today? Turns out, your view is mostly of my printer. Am I sitting somewhere comfy to motivate myself to film because I really didn't want to today? Yes. I was thinking back, yeah, I'm gonna ramble for a little while first. What, what do you want from me? I, I'm, I'm sitting somewhere comfy. When I first started YouTube, I was working at a call center. Surprisingly not the worst job I've ever had, but it wasn't great. Every night that I worked, my shift would end around 9.30 and I would get home probably a little bit before 10 and I would film. That was my filming time. I always filmed after I got home from the call center from like 10 to 11 p.m. And I was like, how did I, why am I struggling to find the motivation to film now? Honestly, the reason is my videos were a lot worse then. <laughs> they were a lot more chaotic. They were a lot comfier. They were a lot dumber. So here I am. I am, re I am returning to my janky as hell roots. I have the same lamp that I, I'm right there, right in my eyes. Stop looking at it. Stop looking. I'm so stupid. <laughs> How have I made it 22 years? So today, without further ado, we are looking into some long Furby fan fiction. I got the idea for this video like I get many of my ideas. Someone told me about it on Tumblr. My battery died already just to complete the, the horrible energy of this video. <laughs> Everything I'm going to look at today is on Wattpad. Um, if you know of any long Furby or Furby fan fictions that are on AO3 or fanfiction.net or anywhere else, let me know about those. That could make a whole other sequel to this video. Today we're just sticking with Wattpad because I think that's what was linked to me by the first person who told me about this. Slash, just like it, I was, when I heard that these things were on Wattpad, I was like, yeah, that checks. That, that, that just fits with the energy of Wattpad, you know, if you're at all familiar with the different fanfiction sites. It just feels like something that would happen on Wattpad, so I didn't really extend my my search beyond that initially but let me know i will click the nasty little links that you send me as always first allow me to quickly interrupt and tell you about this week's sponsor function of beauty function of beauty creates fully custom hair care products made for your unique hair type and goals you get to pick everything down to the fragrance colors and even the name on your bottle and it feels like they've always got new options to try i love spicing it up every time i get new stuff function of beauty never uses any parabens or sulfates and is 100 percent vegan and cruelty free i've been working with them for quite a long time now and i really like all of the products i've tried i use their hair serum like all the time. It is really helpful to have that extra bit of protection because I do straighten my hair almost every day and do stupid things like make my roots blue. You may have noticed that my hair has grown back to its Lord Farquaad glory after last January's pixie cut. More hair means more opportunity for chaos. I could show up on here next week with a chartreuse mullet. This is a perfectly reasonable fear that we should all have, especially considering that I'm even more empowered to do dumb shit to my head when I know that I have a hair care brand that will be so easily tailored to my changing goals and keep my hair healthy through all of the ups and downs, the downs being all of the times that I accidentally gave myself a bowl cut. So go check out Function of Beauty, link in the description below to get 20% off your first order. Something quite interesting did happen in my process of, you know, finding some fan fictions that I wanted to read in this video, which was that I l accidentally logged into my Wattpad account, which I haven't touched since 2012. You know how some sites have that thing now where you can click like sign up with Google and then you just click on your email address and you don't even really have to log in? I don't know how it works. I clicked the sign up with Google thing and I clicked on my email address thinking it was gonna direct me to like, I don't know, make an account, do something, but no, it just, it just yeeted me straight into my eighth grade Wattpad account and I was like, Oh, I have taken some extreme psychic damage today, but I think I'm gonna live. I think I'm gonna pull through it. But before we do that, I do wanna like put out a brief disclaimer that my intention here is not to make fun of fan fiction or to make fun of sites like Wattpad. I myself had a brief but very obsessive phase when I was 13 of writing fan fiction. And yes, before you ask, it was for none other than the 2006 hit anime series Code Geass, Lelouch of the Rebellion. I know that people watching have been upset or have been like self-conscious about their own writing when I make fun of fanfiction or like fanfiction-y writing styles. That's not what I want to do because I've, I've been there in the fanfiction world before too and it was an overwhelmingly positive experience for me so I don't want to taint that for anyone else. The only time that I am going to bother to like rip a piece of writing to shreds is when something about the subject matter is gross or disturbing, which I don't think is going to be a problem here at all. I haven't read all the way through any of these, but I've kind of just like glanced at them to see what's going on. I don't think that's going to be an issue here. I think it's like all satire. Nobody genuinely wants to fuck Long Furby. It's fine. It's good. This is a happy video. Let us go onwards to the first 
one right here. This long Furby X reader one shot. Ever since your name was a fetus, your name has dreamed of touching the long Furby's lips every night. When your name closes him her eyes, <laughs> she imagines the cold hard lips of long Furby, his passion growing every second. His lips are touching your name's lips. Taste the kiss of death. Ever since the new boy showed up in class, your name life changed. Also, I love every time your name closes him eyes. Long Furby started going to your name's school and just so happened to be in him her class. <laughs> him class. Whenever his cold dark eyes lingered over your name's face and licked his lips with no pure intentions, with licked his lips with no pure intentions. I feel like is a better way to read that. I'm just gonna say they for the pronoun, okay. Your name's head only got filled with dirty thoughts. They tried to turn it off, but they couldn't. Their burning passion set on by Long Furby was only growing larger. You missed the opportunity to say longer. Every second he looked at your name and he knew it. Oh shit, he knows. Where's his face? After class, your name walks to their locker only to be grabbed by their shoulders and pushed on their locker by the long Furby with what arms? <laughs> no, it's buttered noodle. <laughs> and or girl girl, I think we're gonna give her arms when, when she is longified. Um, the surgery is scheduled for February. Hopefully everything works out with that. Your name's breath calmed down knowing it was him, the boy. It was the long Furby. What are you doing here, long Furby? The boy leaned in with much passion in his eyes, the fuzz on his head getting fuzzier and his dry, hard lips touching yours. I realize you're talking about like the plastic beak on the Furby, but when you say dry lips, I just picture like <laughs> the cracked, nasty winter lips that we all get. He wouldn't let go of your name's lips every second they didn't regret a single second of it. <laughs> every second. They didn't regret a single second of it. <laughs> the reviews say 10 out of 10. The smut is very good and I demand more multiple one shots. Me too. So this next one I have not read any of at all whatsoever. I just saw the title and immediately copied and pasted the link into my Google Doc because um... Oh similar stories we have John Cena x Bill Nye. Cool thanks. Chapter 1 is called Yum. Continue reading next part. I would love to do that. <laughs> it just says, why did I make this? My long boy. Long Furby Times reader. Romance genre. Oh, and it's ongoing as well. Thank God I'm gonna have more content in my life going forward. You are just an average gal with a not so average love life. <gasps> Me. Dear diary. Tomorrow is the first day of high school. I'm so excited. I can't wait to meet all my future buddies. My mother, Linda. <laughs> What high schoolers, like, buddies of my mother, Linda. Actually, this is, all of these are probably actually written by, like, real high school and middle schoolers. Anyway, my mother, Linda. I don't care if your mother isn't called Linda. She is now. Because it's long Furby times reader, so this is, this is your point of view. Or my point of view? Is it my mother or is it your mother? All of our moms are called Linda now because this character, who is us, all of us, it has a mother named Linda. Anyway, Linda has been teasing me about a potential love interest all summer. I must say, I haven't put much thought into the idea. I suppose boys have never interested me. All my other friends have had their boy crazy phase or are still in them, but I never had one myself. Me neither. I usually just laugh at their preposterous daydreams and make a snarky comment. I have often felt alienated from my peers for this very reason. Sometimes I wonder if I'm even capable of falling in love. Will I disappoint my family? So much of what is considered a successful, happy, and fulfilling life revolves around love, marriage, and family. I want to be loved. I want to love. I guess I never found the right person. I hope I develop a proper crush this year. Well, I think that is all for now. I still need to get ready for tomorrow. What a beautiful tale. I can't, w I can't wait for our, our tragic disillusioned narrator to realize that she's into Furbies. You put the pen into the crevice of your notebook as you sigh and lay back in your chair. Okay, so now we're switching from the, the, the journal entry to the what's really going on. Whoa. Okay, you put the pen in the crevice of your notebook. <laughs> Why is that so? You put the pen. Before you leave the room, you glance at the prepared outfit laying neatly on the chair and the, the backpack and the shoes sitting close to it. What, what high schooler is this organized? What high schooler lays out their outfits and calls their mother Linda and their friends buddies? I, not me at that age. I guess the furries are the ones who have had it together this entire time. Um, you feel a wave of nostalgia hit you. You can't tell if you're sad or happy, empty or overwhelmed. All you know is that the feeling has consumed you whole. You stare for a couple more seconds before coming out of the... Trance. 
As you walked to, or better said, skipped euphorically to school, you could feel the wind combing your hair, <laughs> the morning dew on your face, and the crisp cold against your skin. You looked wonderful with your black skinny ripped jeans. Oh yes, my montage, my favorite, yes. Okay, turn up the music. You looked wonderful with your black skinny ripped jeans and your skull t-shirt. Nobody got more emo than you. You were feeling your Effie Stoneman fantasy and it seemed like nothing could go wrong. Oh my God. You get it, Ebony Darkness. You saw a gigantic pile of awkward teenagers in front of the school waiting to be assigned to their classes. You stood in the crowd somewhat mysteriously to hide your shyness and extreme discomfort, still feeling semi-confident. You waited until you heard your name. You went towards the school entryway with all the other students from your class. You followed the teacher to your classroom. You sat at the first seat you saw and waited for somebody to sit next to you. Unfortunately, nobody did. A girl who seemed a bit panicked, probably because she was the last one, sat next to you and introduced herself. Hey, I'm Drew. Hi, Drew. Fun fact. Uh, this is actually exactly how I met one of my best friends and current roommate. We're 22 year old adult humans living together in a plague and we met because her bus was late on the first day of class and she got stuck sitting next to the weird kid. The room was filled with chatter, everyone trying to get to know each other before the professor comes in to end their fun. You really didn't know what to do, so you just sat silently pretending you were thinking about something important. <laughs> Do you ever just pretend you're thinking about something important? Soon enough, though, the teacher started the roll call. Everyone eventually introduced themselves, including you. What a pain, you said to no one in particular. <laughs> Drew was like, who the fuck is she talking to? You analyzed each person, making assumptions about each one subconsciously, of course, as all of us do. So you do have thoughts, or I do have thoughts. The only person you could bear talking to was Drew. She was definitely the silent type. She didn't care much for others, unless you were dear to her, so. Oh my God, is there gonna be a love triangle between protagonist Drew and Long Furby? As you were walking down the school hallway about to leave, walking next to Drew, you saw him. He was really tall and skinny, fragile, but not weak. Long, some might say even. He looked as if he came out of a Tim Burton movie. He looked almost sickly, psychotic, but all powerful. <laughs> you couldn't explain it. You were so drawn to him. His aura was infectious. You were left in a trance for a couple of seconds before Drew took you out of it. You, you didn't tell her anything about him. You were too embarrassed, but you knew you needed to find out more about him. Chapter three, longing. Someone finally did it. Author's note, I think I'm having an aneurysm. You were waiting for Drew in front of the store. You made plans to meet there, nothing more, just to hang out. You couldn't help but thinking about him while you were waiting. You thought about him a lot. You would often try to find out what his social medias were, but that was a hard task. At the boy porridge, everything about him was shrouded in mystery. At the boy porridge. Perhaps that was the reason you liked him? Question mark? Maybe you were just projecting. Maybe you just saw the first attractive person to like and just made up all the rest in your head. You don't like him, you just like the idea of him and maybe you're reading too deep into this. Actually, a lot of this has been like really accurate queer teenager crush feelings in just, uh, overall. Interesting. Drew never talked about her mom. How come you never talk about your mom? Whoa, where did that come from? I'm just wondering. It's nothing grim, my mom is just weird. She's like Amber, Rayanne's mom from my so-called life. She's really into witchcraft and stuff. I mean, that's kind of cool though. <laughs> When I was little, she would make my friends have tarot readings. It was just really uncomfortable. What, like she had like a group of like kindergartners around like practicing tarot readings on them. That's hilarious. Okay. She does tarot readings. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you should come to get one someday when, oh, you're serious about this? Hmm, like next Saturday, I'll be there. Oh, hell yeah. You're gonna get a tarot reading and they're gonna tell you, you're gonna follow up with Long Furby. To be continued, no. I'm invested! The long Furby Max, the long Furby ex Furby reader. So the Furby, the reader is also a Furby, okay. Your name is one out of five human Furbies in the Furby kind. The human Furby population has gone down though and has only half of the Furby humans. Then a war breaks out between the long Furbies and the regular Furbies having a very bloody fight. Your name had ran away from her home only to be caught by no other than Max, the leader of the Long Furbies. What happens when your name seems lost in his adorable gaze and body? Oh boy, what does? Part one, the Furby War. It was a dark and stormy night in the woods full of fire and smoke, gunshots heard everywhere. Your name had been running away from the blasted war that was currently going on and had 
find a hiding space fast. They were very hungry looking for anything to eat and would even consider a stick if they had to. I mean, sticks don't really have any nutritional value, but a Furby could conceivably eat most things, I think. Soon they heard a rustle in the bushes and looked over, but was tackled and knocked out. All they heard before blacking out was the boss will be proud and then darkness filling their vision. Time skip for my depression. <laughs> I'm currently working on a writing thing and there, literally there's so many things that's just like, I don't fucking know right now, man. Time skip from my depression. I'll come back and write this later. When they woke up, they were in a cage with, a, with other Furby citizens. They turned in, into their Furby form to blend in with the others soon being taken from their cage and turned back into a human. But the person who had taken them out to put a collar around their neck and dragged them into a room and tied them up in a chair then left your name there. Someone walked in your name, look, looked up at the person, and immediately started to sweat. They chuckled and leaned down to your name's height, smiling devilishly. Hello, dear. He says, hello, dear. But that's like, is he, is he your grandma? As I looked up, I see a teenager about the age of 17. Within 18, I can see he has soft blue hair and soft ears on top. He wore a black leather jacket over his white shirt along with a dark navy blue jeans with brown boots. Not gonna lie, he kinda cute. He lifted my chin up so I could look into his soft, light green eyes and blushed slightly. Darling, I'm going to need you to focus here. I sweat slightly and blush. Sorry, no need to be dear. Now let me explain Max's point of view now. Okay, this is the, the sexy long Furby, but also human. So they're humans who morph into Furbies is what I'm gathering or some of them are exclusively Furbies. I'm not quite clear on the lore here. Yo, uh, was she checking me out? I mean, ladies check me out all the time. Uh, yeah, like, me too, totally. I let go of her shin and stand up straight with my hands behind my back. You're here because me and you are the last kind of Furby human life. So during this stupid little war, I'm soon to keep you safe. I guess I'm staying here for a year, perhaps. Depends on when this godforsaken war ends. What is happening here? The Bible of Thursday Plurbin and Boy Porridge. Thursday Plurbin and Boy Porridge is a long furby created by strange eons. He is an absolute god, so I made him a Bible. Thank you. Chapter one is called No Copyright Please. <laughs> Thursday Plurbin and Boy Porridge belongs to Strange Eons. In no way does he belong to me. I am just making shit up for an epic gay Bible. Cre credit to Strange Eons. Check out her channel. Yeah, I, I do here. It's pretty cool. No worries, my dudes. Write all the Thursday fanfiction you want. Thursday Plurbin and Boy Porridge floated in the void, but he decided, fuck this. I want to do something. Be someone. So he smashed a bunch of floating rocks together, creating an orb in the sky. He created multiple orbs with it, and many more universes of orbs. But he decided to focus on an orb with lots of water and land. I took a astro Astronomy 101 course in university. I feel like I should have just been like, yeah, some, there's some fucking orbs out there, man. You know, there's the orbs with the other orbs. That's it. He decided, fuck yeah, this planet is rad. I will create inferior life here. So he created lizards, fish, and dinosaurs. And he created Furbies, an intelligent, all-knowing race. They are great and wise, and those that possess them are lucky to do so. Yes, we are. Thought you wanted to make a little bit of better eye contact with him. There you go. Just for you. Now, Thursday hated order. He loved chaos and disarray, but he created order anyway. He created the day and night. He created the sun and the moon with his yellow beak, and he used his eyes to create the sky, the glorious gay sky. He used, hell <laughs> yeah, the sky is gay. He used, <laughs> he used the matter of his dark fur to create the night. Take notes. Uh, however, Thursday knew this was not enough. So he gathered a council of long Furbies. Their names were Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. He named the days of the week after the council. Now we all know that Thursday controlled the universe and everything in it. So he decided to smash a flaming rock into the earth. He knew that it would bring great destruction, but did it anyway. Thursday created the dinosaur. Well, he did create the dinosaurs, but he also created the asteroid that made the dinosaurs extinct. And he could do it to us again. But Thursday was easily bored by the apes, so he evolved them into a species called the humans, inferior only to the Furbies. I forgot to mention, there were various genders of each species, the most common being male and female. Thursday has always and continues to say non-binary rights. These humans, however, did do upsetting things. They didn't support gay marriage, which very much pissed Thursday off, but boy porgism has no rules. Still doesn't. 
Welcome to the church of boy porridge. We have no rules. Even if you're homophobic, you're, you're, you're in it. Welcome. You're part of the church of boy porridge now. Don't ask questions. It just is. Sorry. I don't make the rules because there is none. The humans lived peacefully on earth and Thursday enjoyed watching their antics wars past as did centuries. The year was 2002. Now at this time, most Furbies were either living happily with inferior humans or on an island where they skinned and ate people as sacrifices to Thursday. Okay. A little girl came and freed the Furbies from an evil cock smoker. I'm sorry, are you telling me that the Bible of Thursday Plurbid and Boy Porridge on Wattpad takes place in the same universe as the Furby Island movie? First comment says, is the girl Natty from the Furby movie? I swear it's 2002. 2005. So I in fact don't actually know what that's referencing. Someone want to read the Strange Eons X Classically Abbey fanfiction for me and let me know if it's satire because I'm a little afraid to confirm that one for myself. If it's funny, I'll read it. Other fanfictions or books in the realm of stuff that I generally read on this channel are always welcome. Send me your recommendations. I'm most likely to see them if you send them to my Tumblr asks because I am a trash person. I trust my Tumblr recommendations generally. I mean, they got us here. Are we having a good time here? That's all for tonight. Thank you so much for watching my friends and I will see you in another video very soon.